The FMS Futura looks amazing, but how good is it really, and should you buy it? We put it to the test so that you can find out. What's going on YouTube? Today we got the Futura version three with the brand new 80 millimeter motor in it that FMS has installed right out of the box. We're gonna be flying this thing with the Spectrum GPS located on the inside on a 5500 lithium high voltage pack running on a Spectrum AR637T. So you know what? Instead of wasting your time talking about it, let's get it up in the air and take it on up. All right. So we're trying a new format. I got my camera back on me again. I got Will in a different spot. Let's get this bugger up in the air. A little squirrely on the takeoff. No flaps. There we go. This thing is amazing, guys. This is uh, the third time we've tried to shoot this jet. Every time I've tried to shoot it before, it was either nonstop gunshots or it was something goofy that was in the way, but this time around, we've got it. So let's go ahead and put it on the GPS so you guys can see what's going on with it. There we go. Stalled it out, get it right above the ground. This thing hauls some serious rear end. 90 miles an hour, not too bad. We're not even trying to do speed passes just yet. But as a sport jet, let's see what this thing can really do. Full rudder over, almost no problem at all. The center of gravity where it's at with that battery shoved up just to the front makes it so that the jet can easily perform all sorts of great maneuvers. I mean, this thing feels locked in. It's awesome to fly. Put it into a barrel roll. There we go. All right, bring it back around for another knife edge pass. A little faster this time. The way it just rolls around, doesn't even experience an accelerated stall is really good because most sport jets tend to drop a wing on a, under a, like maneuvers like that. I mean, you can really accelerate this thing. You can put it into minimum radius turns, no problem. Doesn't want to bite you. Put it up into a tail slide right in front of the sun. Very forgiving. Check our voltage. 23.11. The reason why we use lithium high voltage packs is because Danny sent them to us and we know they're good because we've tested them out extensively. But all the, all the fun factor in the world doesn't mean much if the plane can't land worth a damn. So let's go ahead and see what it'll do. Get it on the uh, track for final approach here. A little bit of throttle let in. Look at this thing go. Kisses the ground. Hit an ant pile on the runway. That's all right. Shows you the gear are pretty durable. They are all on the uh, oleo retracts, so they have no problems with the trailing link suspension or anything. You could fly this off grass if you wanted to. In fact, Will, why don't you go ahead and step onto the runway. We're going to land it on grass real quick. Show you guys that it can be done while we're on the maiden flight here, and then we'll taxi back onto the runway or maybe even take off from the grass. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 23.34 volts. Not a single problem with grass at all. Look at that thing go. Handles it no issues. Let's get it away from those clumps of grass on the runway if, if possible. We're gonna take off, heading right at will. Here we go. Now the front nose gear does get kind of caught because it's on a spring system. So the door is on a spring and it can get pressed by the air and can cause it to mess up a little bit. But other than that, let's see how it does invert it. Almost no stick pressure needed to make it fly invert it a little bit more level than it was. Uh, I could do better than that though. So Will, uh, I need you to step a little bit further off the runway to give me some visual confirmation that I'm not going to hit you. <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate that, right, man? That's right. <laughs> All right, cool. If you guys haven't noticed, we are back into our original format with the two uh, cameras. A little bit touchy on the center of gravity. There we go. It takes a very light hand to maneuver this jet when it's like this. So it's not the best looking thing. If I had bothered to set up the gyro to have like a pitch hold, it would be hands off, no problem. But we can always test that out. But I kind of like trying it with my own hand and then figuring out how to set it up correctly. 
All right. Let's bring her in. Get another nice, smooth touch and go. We're not even touch and go. Let's just drop it in. Maybe swap the battery out and get it back up in the air. Look at the way that thing just lands. No problem. Love it. 22.88 volts. Has a bit of a landing rollout, unfortunately. Let's walk up to the jet or bring it back to us. Get on over here, would you? It is a little squirrely on the ground, but no big deal. Twenty-two point eight four volts. There we go. Turbine power down. Love the futuristic styling on this thing. It looks awesome. I mean, it flies like a dream, guys. Like I had no problems whatsoever picking this thing up, hurtling it through the sky. I tried to make it stall and it just didn't want to most of the time. So it's nice to see, man. Uh, look at the quality of the retracts on this thing. You can see where it went through the, through the dirt and the grass. Uh, honestly, I think what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna just let the cameras run. We're gonna cut over to it as soon as I put a new battery in and then we're gonna go ahead and take off of the grass and see how it handles that. Some of you guys do fly off the grass and you guys wanna be able to see how these jets perform on grass and whether they perform at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for you. Yeah, it's too thick. That's okay. We'll just take it up again. Sorry about that, guys. So apparently it cannot take off from super thick grass, but you know, what jet can, really? Not even a real one. I mean, I'm sure even if, most real jets don't take off of grass, right? All right. All right, let's bring it around. So you guys may notice we have a 5280RC.com afterburner. You got to spell it out. The word 5280RC is all spelled, not numbers. Blue fire afterburner system. Makes this thing look amazing in the sky. Let's see, where are we going here? Maybe another uh, knife edge pass down the runway. If you like sport jets, I think the Futura is probably one of the best ones you're gonna be able to get. It reminds me of the Viper 90 millimeter. It just doesn't have the same pop toppy capabilities that the Viper does, but it's still a good jet. I mean, you can do so many good things with it. It's so much fun to fly. 23.93 volts. Let's go straight at my face here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the speeds that thing was going, if it hit me in the head, I probably would have killed myself. So it tells you how much I trust this jet. I'm sure Will made it look nice and dramatic, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, you can see tomahawk up underneath there. It feels like a tomahawk coming for your head, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, bring it in. Do another quick touch and go. Throttle off. Let it just descend and glide. A little bit of throttle at the end. Let's make it hover. Almost got a torque roll out of it. It was trying to. Six minutes. Wish we had a better sky with it. Uh... That a little bit better. That's all right. It'll pop up on the camera. When I go to do some video editing, it'll pop up. Use the stall to my advantage there, dropping one wing to add some rudder into it. There we go. You can stick smash with it too and do some interesting maneuvers with it. It is definitely an interesting jet. But real quick though, one of the things we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and drop all the gear, land real fast, take off again, and we're gonna try invert it with a heading hold on the gyro. I need to set it up. I don't normally fly with it. We'll see how it holds it. A little bit uh, wonky in that landing there. That's okay. All right. While Will continues to film, we'll end up cutting this segment out, but I'm gonna just go real quick into the gyro settings. Actually, we're not gonna cut it out. We'll just leave it, because you guys can see me editing things. So we're gonna go to my gyro gains, go to my heading, put it on flight mode number two, and put a heading gain of 8% on the, uh, what do you call it? The other flight mode here. So let's go back into it, take off. 
Flaps 50. Let's give it a, a shot, see how well it holds upside down. We don't normally do this, but you know, some people love setting up sport jets to fly themselves. Let's we'll see how well this one handles it. Heading. Okay, we're on the heading mode right now. Let's put it upside down. 2.02 volts. Hands off the sticks. Look at that thing go. Seven minutes. It does feel a little weird. All right. You trust me with this one, Will? All right. <laughs> Famous last words, am I right? Heading. Okay, we're on our heading mode. Little squirrely, a <laughs> little squirrely. That's why I don't do heading mode gyros much. So we're gonna get out of that. I just about wrecked the jet trying that out. We'll bring it around, land it right at us. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, if you're setting up a heading hole gyro, it doesn't mean the plane flies for you at all, guys. It does automate some of the processes, but you still have to know how to fly. Things to consider. All right, here we go. We're gonna do some speed tests on this 5300 lithium high voltage pack. Let's see how fast this thing can go. Gear up. Eight minutes. Save some of our power. The wind is actually coming from the direction we took off into, which is good. So we're gonna turn around. I'm gonna go up vertical. And we're gonna turn her around. 3.7 miles per hour. There we go. 3.5 miles per hour. 117.4 miles per hour. So what's the max speed we had there? 117, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's do a level speed. 24.13 volts. 106.3 miles per hour. Not bad. Max speed is still 117. That's not the fastest jet in the world, but hey, it's still fun. Miles per hour. So it seems like the top speed for today is gonna to be 117 because we don't have any real winds to help us out. So 117 for an 80 millimeter jet, I don't think it's too bad. I'm sure somebody out there in the comments will be like, oh, I got mine to go 3000 miles an hour. But for me, I, I'm, I'm okay with this. Let's try again. We're running out of power, but that's okay. Miles so we can't beat 117. That's okay. Heading. Put it back in the heading hold, see how it handles. That doesn't handle too bad. I gotta say guys, I do rather enjoy this plane for being what it is, a sport plane of course, which means it excels at precision aerobatics, it excels at speed passes. It also does that F-18 style minimum radius exit too, where you, you go from the minimum, minimum radius turn into the uh, full pitch up just like this. See how it's stalled out of it? You can actually see it's butt waggling as you try to, as it starts to accelerate at least stall. That's pretty cool. I love that kind of stuff. That was cool. And it didn't want to bite either, which tells you that it's got really good stall characteristics. See how it just goes vertical? Let's see if it'll actually do a Cobra maneuver without gaining altitude. Because the way I got that CG might make it work. Three, two, one. Nope, not a Cobra. It was a 45 degree angle. But still worth testing to see if it would do it. 22.34 I gotta say though, I do like the way this thing handles. I mean, it doesn't, it's not unstallable by any stretch of the imagination but it is difficult to stall and have it bite you. So let's see what happens if we go full 90 degrees and just pull. I'm holding back elevator and that's it. And it's not trying to drop a wing. That's crazy. There's your stall test. Let's do another stall test. Let's go loop and hold nothing but elevator. No stall yet. I'm holding full elevator. Is it actually doing high alpha? That's you, what it's doing. You gotta be kidding me. Do it again. Let me get a good zoom in on Hold that. on a second. Now it's starting to bite because the airspeed's getting too low. All right, let's go back up and hold the elevator back right in front of the sun. Look at that. 
It is doing high alpha. That's crazy. I'm just holding the stick back right now. That's nutso. I don't feel confident doing it close to the ground. There, there's our stall that we went into that, that turn, banked it and pulled too hard. There it goes again. All right, time to bring her in. Got our stall testing in. It does high alpha. That's fantastic. Who thought that was going to happen, huh? I know, right? Absolute banger of a design, guys. And you get those nice mains touchdowns every single time. If I felt more confident with it, I would actually do wheelies too, because I bet you could. Um, the only thing I don't like about this jet right now is the fact that it kind of takes a little bit of time to slow down on the runway. It's very aerodynamic, so it's kind of difficult to get it to want to stop on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the, the final thoughts on this jet here. You guys have seen what it can do. You've seen the other footage by this point of what we've done with it in previous days when we were trying to get the, the footage shot with it. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to recommend that you guys do is replace the main wheels with Dubro, not low bounce, but just regular super light wheels. They're made out of foam. They're nice and squishy. They handle pavement really well. They would have handled the grass if the grass wasn't as thick as it is. The, uh, the struts are really good. Let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. You can see not a whole lot of force is necessary to get them to bend and actually provide some trailing link suspension. These are basically the Viper 90 millimeter gear scaled down. So if you're looking for a jet that can handle grass landings or can handle like grass takeoffs, if the grass has actually been mowed in the recent memory, then this is a jet that I'll actually be able to do it. Uh, you did see that we were able to land it on grass. It did kind of make the jet look a little dirty. <laughs> there is grass clippings and stuff on it. But other than that, a little quick wipe down, you wouldn't even notice it. Uh, the jet quality overall, I mean, the paint job on this thing looks <laughs> phenomenal. I love the way this thing looks. The overall impression of it, it makes me think of a jet out of Ace Combat 3, the futuristic timeline. For those of you guys who don't play video games, that's okay. If you do play it and you know what I'm talking about, then it looks like a Newcom jet. It looks awesome. I love it. The uh, ailerons are hinged really, really nice with actual like carbon fiber. I wish the rudder and elevators were. Uh, unfortunately, they are just on foam hinges, but they hold up just fine. The flaps are simple flaps. So if you're curious about how those work, you'll see them drop out here. They do pop into a pocket on the back, so they do kind of have almost a slotted flap kind of appearance, but they're not slotted. I think this plane would have even better performance if they were slotted. Overall, um, definitely not a beginner's jet, but it's very forgiving. This could easily be your third jet to fly. If you're looking for a jet that's fast, it's fun to fly, and knife edges like it's on a, an actual like roller coaster rail, this is what you want. This is phenomenal. Probably one of the better FMS jets they put out. That being said, you want my score on it? This thing is a solid nine and a half. The reasons being, it handles abuse. You see me try to take it off of the grass. It didn't even get damaged. The wheels are nice and sturdy still. The airframe looks great. A uh, quick spray with some water to get all this. Hell, I can even get most of it off my fingers. Not a problem. The uh, build quality is really nice. The uh, looks and detailings are really good. The fact that it comes with the newest 80 millimeter motor, I'm gonna put it right here so you guys know what it is. I don't remember the number off my head, but it's, a, it's the newest version three of the FMS Platinum. It used to be a 2100 kV motor, now it's a 2000, and it's bigger. So it has more thrust overall, and is actually the same weight as the 2100. So it's got a lot of nice things going for it. Uh, plenty of space in this battery compartment. You can do what I did and hit it with some red electrical tape to provide some protection on the foam when you go to put the canopy in and out. Get yourself a 5280RC Universal Afterburner, put it in there. Man, does that look good. Makes this jet go to an entirely different level when that burner is active and you can see it bright as day. Hope you guys appreciate. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you guys again next time.